Hi, this is JP from Not Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And we are continuing our journey through the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign with Wilson Richards in True Solo. And we are at the prelude dawn of the final day. So I already did the setup here and in the uh, intro we had to pick two tokens from the chaos pack and replace them with uh, one higher minus token so i was lucky enough to pull two zeros so i am uh, removing those and adding these minus ones to the deck uh, i mean to the chaos pack for the remainder of the campaign uh, we had only four experience uh, after the hemlock house scenario uh, so I felt like my deck was missing a secondary weapon, so uh, I used two experience to upgrade one of my overpower to level two. And I added uh, two copies of Hatchet into the deck and I removed the fine clothes because I'm really not um, piling that much anymore because most of the town is set against me already so they are not really cooperative so it is what it is but we'll have to make do but i'm i'm focusing on different things now with uh, wilson uh, we are starting with two uh, physical trauma and one mental trauma and uh, that is basically it so uh, we have set up here for the prelude, so we'll play that, and after that I will pick the next scenario, which I will play immediately after. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so we'll start by reading the agenda and act cards. Uh, agenda 1a, all is full love, full of love. The people of the Vale dance with an almost manic energy. Riotous music and a sweet perfume scent hang in the air. Forced, when you draw weakness, cancel its revelation effect and discard it. And we start the scenario with one doom on the agenda, because we are playing solo. And uh, uh, dawn of the final day. A beautiful sheen hangs over everything, shimmering in the air around you. Objective, talk to the locals and uh, prepare yourself for the feast. We start at the boarding house and uh, this time I am not doing the same mistake. I will do the um, action here to read the codex entry so we don't miss out on stuff like we did last time. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so uh, we are ready to start so i'll draw my opening hand one two three four five six okay uh then that we draw again mm -hmm. uh, we don't need that not i don't need that either and that I'm actually just keeping the hatchet and tinker in my hand and hoping I'll draw something else. But I, th I'm, uh, I feel like, uh, yeah. So we really, really want to find uh, prepared for the worst or the chainsaw. But uh, the hatchet is a good secondary because it, it only costs uh, one uh, for Wilson to play the hatchet and it is a decent buff to your attack because you add your agility and uh, you just have to be careful not to defeat an enemy with it you need to hit it uh, with your fist to kill it so that you don't have to discard the hatchet because otherwise it will discard if you uh, defeat an enemy with the hatchet so we have lockpicks and hatchet uh, and a couple of tinkers and uh, emergency cash. Okay, so first uh, action will be, uh, we'll do the, you ask around about the veil. So we read um, Codex Entry 9. Uh, 
Miss Olmsted can't stop laughing as you ask her about the festivities and uh, who is at work up around the whale. Choose one of the options below to resolve. Investigators at boarding house may spend any number of actions as a group to choose that many additional options. Any investigator may trigger this codex again. I think William had something to do at the old mill. Search the set of set residence encounter set for William Hemlock and put him into play at the old mill asset size base up. Theo was supposed to manage that store, store today. Search the set of set residence encounter set for Theo Peters and put him into play at that general store asset side face up. Uh, I think I saw River vamping with some of the, uh, their friends here in the study. So the set aside residence encounter set for River have torn and put them uh, into play at the boarding house asset side face up. Uh, okay, uh, I think we want to talk to Theo. So we'll put Theo Peters into play at uh, Tad's general store. And uh, oh yeah, we have Mother Rachel and Judith Park already in play. And uh, I'll uh, spend an additional action to put River into play also here at the boarding house because I think I want to try and talk to her or uh, them too. Okay, so. Uh, uh, as a last action, I think I will parlay with River. So we are three versus uh, three, and I'll commit one of the tinkers. I don't need two. Okay, so we are four versus three. Uh, elder thing minus one. If this is a parlay attempt, to reveal another token. <laughs> Damn. Uh, we already removed all of the um, zeros from the bag, so I'm not uh, really hoping to succeed here. It is a minus one, so we fail. That that's a shame, but uh, it is what it is. We'll try again next round. Um, I think uh, I'm not playing anything at this point, so. We'll draw a card, overpower uh, level 2, and we gain a resource. So that is the first round. Let's go do the next round. We add a doom. There is uh, no encounter set, so we don't draw anything. So uh, we'll start by actually drawing a card, trying to get something to boost my uh, int uh, intellect or willpower. Okay, well, okay, I'm, I'm trying with the scent, uh, scene of the crime to parlay again. So we are four versus three, and uh, uh, yeah, four versus three, and let's see what happens. And it is uh, skull, skull is minus x, x is the current day number, so we fail. Okay, this is the last try. If this fails, I'll give up and I'll go do something else. So, polling three versus three. <sighs> minus one, okay. Uh, we'll cut our losses and just ignore her, uh, them. Except uh, perception, I'll try with that next round. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. No encounter card. So uh, if I wouldn't have drawn the perception, I wouldn't try it one more time. So we'll try the parlay one more time. So we are five versus three. Hoping to, hoping to hit this one now. Ah, minus four. Let's let's give up. <laughs> it was not meant to be. So we'll move over here, and we have a free move ability from here. So I'll use that and uh, uh, choose and discard X cards from your hand where X is the current day number. So I'm just doing that. So we'll discard 
that, that, and um, uh, let's lose the tinker. So we'll read. Um, Uh, Pale uh, codex num entry eight. <clears throat> uh, if Theo stood by you, otherwise, I'll get you that dog mask right away, Mr. Sanders. Theo shouts. Do you mind delivering this to the commons for me? He hands you a package. It's for my cousin in Portland. Remember that you are delivering a package. Okay. Well. Yeah, uh, well, uh, we'll remember that by, I'll, I'll just have this to remind me. And uh, last action, I'll do the parlay here. You haggle for goods and chat with the locals. So, codex entry 14. So, uh, check Simon Atwood's notes. If the plan is underway, it isn't. So, otherwise, the general store is swamped with visitors, buying flowers, wreaths and bright, bright quilts as workers come and go. You may spend five resources to search your deck for an item card and play it, ignoring its cost. Any other investigator may trigger this codex again. Uh, I am spending the five resources because I'll definitely play the chainsaw. So I'll search my deck for the chainsaw. There's one I'm just want, wanting to see. It, it was quite, quite a way uh, down. So we'll play the chainsaw. So we are ready, ready for the next scenario with that. And now I'm regretting I uh, discarded the Tinker, so it is what it is. Uh, and that is our turn. We'll go to upkeep, we draw prepared for the worst, of course, when we don't need it anymore. And that is that round, let's go to the next round. We had a Doom, uh, five or, uh, I mean four of six, no encounter card. First action will go to the commons and we'll do this uh, action here. So you inspect the com uh, communal hall and check out the local delivery service and it is the codex entry 16. And uh, if you are delivering a package, you hand the package across the, the counter to Marta Jean who regards you with a long smile. A teacup lies shattered on the floor nearby. Increase Theo Peter's relationship level. Each investigator earns one bonus experience. Okay, well that, that was a good one. So now uh, we have Theo Peter's at the re relationship level three. So that, that's at least good. And uh, next, uh, I think we'll go here and Try our parlays with those uh, people next round. So that was the reminder. So we'll draw a card, emergency cash, and we'll gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom. So now this is the last round. And uh, I think we want to talk with Judith Park. So. Judith has uh, spent X resources where X is the current day number. Parlay. So uh, I'm actually uh, playing the emergency cash to get three resources and parlaying. So I spent the three resources. So we read the codex entry seven. Okay. Judith, something's off. Judith stares up at the, at the sun, one hand on the holster of her gun. Above a dark patch of sky fi uh, flits and then descends as a cloud of smoke, dispersing a gag gaggle of tourists. 
Judith raises her gun and prepares to fire into the smoke. So the set aside Ancients of the Color Encounter set for one copy of Miasmatic Shadow, Enemy and Spawn it at the crossroads. Check your camp lock if Judith stood by you and or the thing in the depths was defeated and or Judith Park's relationship is level 4 or higher, proceed to Judith 2, otherwise skip to Judith 3, so... Uh, uh, we don't have any one of those, so we'll skip to Judith 3. The bodyguard fires blindly into the cloud, shouts of alarm ring through the crossroads as tourists dive for cover. The roiling cloud flickers like a mirage. Son of a, Judith exclaims, thunderstruck. Discard one card at random from your hand. Increase Judith Park's relationship level. Each investigator earns one bonus experience. Okay, so Ju Judith is back to three. And uh, I'm just marking that we have now two bonus experience from this. And... Uh, we have to still discard one card at random from our hand. Okay. Okay, so we lose the prepared for the worst. We still have the hatchet and lockpick. So uh, I could have lost the lockpick, uh, the hatchet or the prepared for the worst, but I want to keep the lockpicks. Okay, uh, we only have. Uh, one action left to do anything and I'm debating do I want to just draw one card because I'm really underprepared for the next scenario. So I'll do that, I'll draw a card. Uh, matchbox is great and that is our turn and we'll go to upkeep, we draw another chainsaw, okay, and we get a resource. So that is okay, uh, that is that round, and let's go to the next round. And we advance, uh, I could have done this uh, on the last clip, but yeah, uh, we will advance, so... Oh yeah, um, I forgot to spawn the enemy, but it didn't matter, it's aloof and we didn't discard any cards. Okay, so this miasmatic shadow is at the crossroads, but it doesn't matter. Actually... Uh, actually, it does matter, because... Um, uh, we would have discarded a card after this was at the crossroads. So when you discard one or more cards from your hand at Miasmatic Shadow's location, it is, if it is ready, it engages you and makes an immediate attack. So um, let's say that I didn't draw this, so uh, at upkeep I would have drawn uh, this because my last action would have been trying to evade this enemy. And I would have committed the hatchet for the test, so I'm uh, evading four versus three. So it wouldn't hit me. And it is a minus one and it is not a parlay. So uh, we would have evaded, so it wouldn't have hit us. And then it would ready and be aloof again. Okay, <laughs> so uh, a little mistake there, but uh, we got there in the end. I just lost one card and didn't draw one. So uh, we uh, resolve the Bertie's choice. Check your camp log if Bertie uh, had an epiphany. Um, I don't think so. Uh, Birdie was rescued and... Let's see... Birdie didn't have an epiphany. So we'll go do otherwise. Uh, you reconvene with Dr. Marquez and at the boarding house. Bertie approaches you and the professor with obvious excitement. I've had a revelation about the Hemlock Isle. The food chain is uh, chaos. Predators predat predated by prey. Poetic, isn't it? Something is 
Something, something in the food or water induces a frenzy. In fact, this entire celebration is a kind of frenzy. He gestures to the kid, giddy figures and dancing children. Resolution 1. Okay. Uh, let's see. Resolution 1. Dr. Marcus nods along to Bertie's observation. You're onto something. The bliss is almost a kind of, of, of lure. Draw in prey. Numb them to pain and drain them of their faculties. Uh, then devour what remains. The, the professor arches an eyebrow. Uh, it would have to be a highly advanced apex predator, although I'm still suspicious the odd behavior is due to toxic gas. Neo Campbellock record Dr. Marcus has a hunch. Proceed to resolution 2. Dr. Marcus looks utterly exhausted <clears throat> as uh, she hefts her back into the back of Theo's blue truck. Today is the last day, she says. Let's make the most of it. Uh, update your camper log if Simon Atwood in Simon Atwood's note if the, there's at least one uh, there, okay, we we'll skip that. Simon is dead. Uh, each investigator earns uh, the bonus experience awarded during this prelude. Record each bonus experience earned under an unspent experience in your campaign log, but do not spend any of it until the end of the next scenario. Make preparations for your final survey. Choose one asset in your play area to keep for the next scenario. It must be one that does not come normally start in play. Discard each other asset and attachment in your play area, except for those that start the, uh, each game in play. Discard down to your opening hand size. Shuffle your discard pile into your deck. Your current hand is your opening hand for the next scenario. You will not draw a new opening hand in or take a mulligan. Discard down to your starting resources. Uh, when setting up the next scenario, skip steps 1 to 8 of the setting up the game on page 27 of the rules reference. Check uh, the area surveyed se section of your camp log and choose a scenario that has not yet been played. Um, we have played the Hemlock House, the Silent Heath and the Thing in the Depths. So I am actually thinking to go after the Lost Sister for the uh, last day scenario. So we'll head there and continue from that. So I will uh, set up the scenario and uh, then we'll see how, how the last day scenario goes. So I'll be right back. And we are set up here for the Lost Sister scenario. So I will be starting only with the chainsaw and lockpicks in hand. I have five resources uh, and uh, another chainsaw in play. And uh, we uh, pair the setup for day three. We have Helen Peters and Gideon Misra in play. And they are both um, um, controlled by one of the investigators. So me and Helen Peters doesn't take up an ally slot. And, uh, we also have William Hemlock in play at the um, Akwan location. So <clears throat> we'll start by reading the agenda and act cards. Into the caves. Waves crash on the shoreline, threatening to wipe out the set of footprints that led into the tidal caverns. You catch the faintest glimpse of a dim blue glow deep within the tunnels. Cards at dark locations use night effects. Cards at all other locations use day effects and four doom threshold. Then we have the missing sibling. Elizabeth Peters has gone missing in the coastal caves, chasing after the family dog. Helen is determined to get her back. Forced after the last clue is discovered from a cave location, put the top card of the cavern's deck into play adjacent to that location. Objective, find Elizabeth Peters. If the investigators found the torn dog leash and found a set of footprints, immediately advance. Okay. And I'm just double checking. We have the fungal cave location set aside out of play. We also have a few enemy cars which I won't go into set aside. We have the cavern deck here 
and uh, I think that is it. Uh, we have a couple of uh, rules. We have dark location, so if the location is dark, then it uses the night, and if it's not, then it uses the day. Uh, of course, if I think if we, uh, yeah, we have double-sided enemies also, so uh, some of the enemies are double-sided, so you flip them around depending on if it is night or day uh, effect. And yeah, uh, we don't draw our opening hand, we already have it, so we'll just start. And uh, yeah, I haven't used Helen Peters before, so uh, she boosts your combat by one a day and night you get plus one evade. So in the case we can evade better and uh, elsewhere we can fight better. And uh, trigger ability after you enter a location, exhaust Helen Peters and deal one damage to her. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location, automatically evade it. I doubt we are going to be using that a lot. And uh, Gideon only has, uh, uh, while you control Gideon Miser, you have one additional accessory slot, so we could have two cleaning kits in play at the same time. And there's a double action parlay, but I doubt we are parlaying with anybody, not even uh, William Hemlock. Uh, I think we need to dig for some cards. Let's see the up one location. It is a three shroud location with zero clues. Uh, action resign, you give up the search. If it is day two, one or two, Aquan gains parlay. Uh, it doesn't, so we don't have that, so we just ignore that text then. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll dig up some cards for the first round, so I'll draw a card. Hatchet, I'll draw another card. Matchbox, and I'll actually play the matchbox down. It will help us to get some clues. Mm. And it costs one less because it's a tool. So that is my first round. I'll draw a card. Hasty repairs. Uh, we haven't seen that actually uh, before, so let's uh, look at it a bit closer. Uh, hasty repairs, revelation, put hasty repairs in the play in your threat area. While triggering abilities on assets you control, set your base skill value to zero. Double action, discard hasty repairs, so I'm, I know what I'm doing next round. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We are to do uh, one of four uh, encounter card is Chroma Blight. Put Chrome Applied in play in your threat area, limit one per investigator. After you draw one or more cards from your deck, place one resource on Chrome Applied as Brilliance. Uh, for if there is a total of six Brilliance on Chrome Applied, put a set aside copy of Crystal Parasite into play at your location, remove Chrome Applied from the game. Well, that is a victory point, so uh, no problem. I'm just gonna double action and get rid of this. And uh, we're not afraid of the Parasite, so. Uh, we will draw, no, I will uh, start investigating these locations, so I'll move, uh, I'll go this way, so last action move, suspended graveyard, four shroud, one clue, cave coastal, action take one horror, you dig through the bone stern moss covering the walls, put the top card of the cavern stack into play adjacent to this location, Group limit once per game. Okay. And that is our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. We draw emergency cash. We'll put one resource on this. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Two of four encounter card is mm, reclaimed by nature. And we are at a cave location. Um, okay, so it's not a dark location, it's cave coastal. So we are reading the day. Uh, Revelation test combat three. If you fail, you must either take two damage or choose the nearest enemy that enemy attacks you. Okay, uh, we are testing. Three versus three, 
and why not? I'm committing the chainsaw to the test. Six versus three. Minus three, so we just barely passed that. And we don't take any damage. Okay. Um, we can't play the lockpicks because uh, we would lose the chainsaw. So I'm actually dig. Oh yeah, that, that speeds up that. Mm. Is there a bad token if we fail? So tablet is uh, minus two. If you are at a cave location, tra treat this token as modifier as minus four. And uh, elder thing is minus two. If an abomination en enemy is at your location, reveal another token. And skulls is x is half the number of uh, revealed cave locations in play. Round it up. Uh, well, I think we are going to resort to doing the action here to take one horror. You can put that on Gideon and you dig through the bo uh, bones, turn moss uh, covering the walls, put the top card of the cavern deck into play adjacent to this location and I'm putting it, uh, let's put it to the right. <laughs> okay, uh, we got the same location. I'm gonna repeat that. So We'll take another horror on Gideon and uh, we'll put the top card underneath here. Uh, we don't want to get too far to the wrong way. So we get a weed choke beach. Forced after you fail a skill test uh, while attempting to evade at the weed choked beach, lose one action. Forced when you would leave weed choked each reveal a chaos token. If a skull, tablet, elder thing or autofail is revealed, you must either cancel the effects of the move or discard an item as it you control. Okay, that is a nasty one. Um, I think I'll uh, use one from my matchbox and uh, try to investigate here. Uh, I'm investigating uh, mm, Three versus uh, three versus two. Oh yeah, there should be a clue here also. Uh, minus two, we fail. So we'll go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card. Old keyring. We gain a resource, and this also gets a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we are at 3 of 4 Doom, and count the card for so this round is uh, Luminous Growth. Um, re revelation attach Luminous Growth to the nearest revealed dark location. Without Luminous Growth attach if able, attach location loses the dark trait. Enemies at attach location get plus 1 fight and plus 1 damage. Action test, agility 3. If you succeed, discard Luminous Growth. I don't think we have any uh, nearest uh, revealed dark location. So I think this just uh, goes away. That's okay. Um, we'll use another matchbox charge and uh, investigate 3 to 2. And I'm actually committing uh, the old key ring. We keep hold of the lockpicks. So uh, we are four versus two. It is a minus two if an abomination enemy is at your location, reveal another token there isn't. So we'll grab this clue and um, uh, after the last clue is discovered from a cave location. Well, this isn't a cave location, so Okay, well, whatever. Uh, we'll try to leave here. So we're testing... Uh, okay, we reveal a token. If we reveal a symbol, we'll just get rid of the matchbox. Mm. Uh, 
Okay, so we lose the matchbox. Well, this is going splendidly. Uh, but it doesn't cancel the move. And... Uh, Okay, uh, we'll start moving this way. Okay, so we're up to, um, yeah, no enemies, we'll go to upkeep, we draw hand-eye coordination and gain a resource and this chroma blight also gets one resource. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We are do so the agenda advances. Uh, we get hunted. A whirling, chittering sound echoes out of the tunnels, tunnel walls. A large crab-like creature emerges uh, from a nearby tidal pool. Antenna is swaying in the air as if searching for you. The thing moves surprisingly fast on dozens of legs and its carapace is covered in sharp barnacles and strings of kelp and rotten seaweed. Whatever it is, it uh, emits the most awful rotten stench you have ever smelled. Spawn one of the set-aside Crustadian hybrid enemies at the coastal location nearest to the most investigators in the uh, light side face up. Each investigator at a dark location must discard one card at random from their hand. Place Doom on Agenda 2A equal to the current day number. Okay. So... Okay, we... We lost some time there. And we get one of these enemies, and we have it, so these are double-sided, night and day side. So, uh, three fight, three health, four evade. Creature, Abomination, Elite, Elusive Hunter. Uh, Crustarian Hybrid gets plus one health, where X is the current day number, so it has uh, six health. Force, when Crystalian Hybrid would take damage from an attack, reduce that damage by one. Oh dear. So this spawned at where uh, one of the Crystalian Hybrid enemies, coastal location nearest to the... Coastal, 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 so it spawns on us, unfortunately. But we can uh, hit it with the chainsaw and uh, get it away from us. And I'll do that, but I'll do it fast. So we'll use hand eye coordination. Oh, yeah, uh, we are getting ahead of ourselves. We still need to draw um, and cut the card for the round and read uh, Darkness closes in. Uh, the cavern walls are alive with churning, shifting fungal growth, and they seem to be following you. Cards at dark locations use night. Effects cards at all other locations use day effects and 12 doom threshold, which we lost three already. And count the card for this round is it is Corpse Lichen. Uh, four fight, four health, three evade, humanoid monster, flora mutated, day, Corpse Lichen cannot move, night, hunter alert, forced. After Corpse Lichen attacks, heal one damage from it. Okay, so yeah, uh, we have two enemies on us. And I think we need to fight our way through this. So, okay, I'm, I'm still gonna hit. Uh, I could just try to... Okay, I'm going to hit uh, using hand-eye coordination. Uh, this guy using the chainsaw. We are hitting uh, six versus... Three. Seven versus three, because we're at a day location. And uh, if an abomination enemy is at the location, reveal another token. That is a minus two. Minus one, we still hit, so minus three together, uh, we're four, six versus three, so we just... Uh, seven versus three, so we hit 
a little two damage to this because it uh, reduces the damage by one. It is elusive, so it uh, runs away to this location and exhausts. Then uh, we will hit the corpse legion, I think. So we're going to, uh, our, as our first action, hit this guy. So we are 7 versus 3 with the chainsaw. Uh, plus 1, it takes 3 damage. And uh, we'll use the last, last charge from our chainsaw to kill the, try to kill the corp lead and 7 versus three, uh, 4. It is a minus 2, there is no abomination enemy here, so it, it is defeated. Uh, but our chainsaw is now dry, so that is unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had experience to upgrade my imaginary caches to level 3, which would have helped in this situation. So uh, I'll just move here, and that is our turn. Enemy phase, nothing happens, upkeep, this guy ready is. I'll mark that one, so it's at this location, and it's a uh, hunter, so it will come after us. And we draw a card, Adventurer, that's helpful, and we gain a resource, and one charge here. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, Encounter Cardis, uh, Black Amanita, day aloof, uh, night massive force. After you discover a clue uh, at Black Amanita's location or a connecting location, it is, and if it is ready, take one direct horror. Okay, it is aloof here, so first action will be to play the Venturer, and we'll exhaust the Venturer immediately. to put one charge on the chainsaw. Uh, we'll engage this enemy <clears throat> and we'll use the chainsaw to kill it. We are hitting seven versus two. Uh, minus one, we defeat that one. Uh, that is our turn. This enemy hunts over here. Upkeep, we draw a card, uh, scene of the crime. And we gain a resource, and this has is one away from spawning. So I might actually spawn it, in, well, not next round, but maybe it, it will spawn after that. So we'll, we need to get um, some charges onto the chainsaw, and then we can kill it. Okay, but... Um, yeah, so we draw a card, get a resource, that gain one, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another Doom. So we are at uh, 5 of 12 encounter cardies. Sudden mutation, and that's the nearest uh, non-elite enemy. If you cannot search the encounter deck and discard pile for a mutated enemy and draw it. Force, when attached enemy is defeated, discard card from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded and spawn it at this location. So, uh, this is now Sudden Mutation. Okay, we'll move one charge onto the Venture, and we'll move over here. So, while you are investigating Mineral Tunnel, it gets plus one Shroud for each card in your hand, max plus six Shroud on easy. Okay, and that is a cave dark location. So now this boosts our agility. So uh, we will try to investigate here. Uh, we have three cards in hand. I'm actually going to play emergency cash out of my hand. And then I will commit scene of the crime. So the shroud is two, we are at four. So 
Skull is minus three, unfortunately, so we fail. The, this hasn't been a good game for the Tog and Pulse. And that is that. So this enemy hunts here. We're going to... Uh, let's see, I moved... Investigate. I still have one action. Um, I'm just trying to investigate again. Just gonna commit the lock fix because uh, we are not seeing the tinker. Uh, four versus one. Uh, minus three. Now we get this clue. And we get to put the top card of the cave deck in play adjacent to us. Okay, and then this hunts here, then we'll go to upkeep, we draw scene of the crime, and uh, we gain a resource, and this bursts, uh, this is removed from the game, and this spawns on us. Okay, I'll put it here. And uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom and counter card for this round is uh, Desiccation. Put Desiccation into play next to the Agenda deck. As an additional cost for an investigator to play a card, they must take one damage force at the end of the round, discard one copy of Desiccation. Uh, we're not going to play any cards this round. We're just going to uh, double tap and kill this one. Uh, okay, so this gets plus two fights and plus uh, one damage e value for each uh, for every two damage on it, so it will be hard to hit it. But we will try to kill it either way. So uh, we'll use the venture last time to get another chainsaw charge and uh, let's see. Uh, first action, we'll hit. Uh, we are hitting uh, 6 versus 2. Minus 1, it takes 3 damage. So now it is... Uh, uh, plus 2, so it's 4. So we're just hitting again. Uh, we are 6 versus 4, 7 versus 4, no, 6 versus 4, uh, it is 2 up, so we should be good, hopefully. 6 versus 4, and minus 1, so it is dead, and it is a victory enemy, so I'll put it here in the victory display. And the last action, we'll get uh, away from this one, so we'll move down, and it is Dry Burrow, uh, two Shroud, one Clue, Day, uh, ac fast action move to a connecting location, Night, Forced, after you end your turn, Dry uh, Burrow, take one horror. And we are ending our turn here, so we'll take one horror, Helen Peters can take it. And we'll go to upkeep, we get the hemlock curse and we get a resource. Okay, we are not uh, struggling with resources, but we are struggling with cards. So I think we need to draw some cards. Okay, and uh, this goes away. That is that round. Uh, this guy hunts here in the enemy phase. And that is that round. Yeah, uh, I'll move this on this side. Okay. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had another duel. We are at 7 of 12. I think we're running out of time. Encounter card is Enervation. Test the uh, combat 5. Reduce the difficulty of this test by one for each damage on you. If you fail, you must either take two damage or choose the 
card with the highest printed cost in your hand and discard it. Uh, it's not that bad. Okay, uh, we are testing uh, 3 versus 3. Not committing anything. Uh, we fail. I'll check the damage still. I, I have plenty of... Uh, Plenty of health left, and we are running out of time. Okay. So, first action. We will play Scene of the Crime, get this clue. And I will spawn the next cavern location. I'll scooch this up a bit. I'm gonna put it below me. Here. And it is open cave. Uh, three shroud, one clue. During your turn, test agility two. This test gets plus one difficulty for e each ready enemy at this location. If you succeed, open cave loses the dark trade until the beginning of the next investigation phase. All cards at this location uh, use day effects. Group limit once per round. Okay. Uh, I should have one more clue on me because I forgot to put it there when I set it up. Okay, the, I will just investigate here and uh, I will actually. Uh, I hate to do this, but. We'll try this. Uh, we're losing the hatchet, so might as well. Um, investigating um, two versus. Okay, I'm going to play it safe. Safe fish. So I'm getting rid of the chain, so we, it pains me to do it, but uh, we'll play the hatchet. Then we'll investigate and commit this card. So we're two versus three. Minus one. So we fail, so we would have lost the hatchet, but we get rid of the hemlock curse. And that is our turn. Enemy face, this enemy hunts here. Upkeep. Uh, we draw a card, overpower, and we gain a resource. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, encounter card for this round is Cavern Moss. Uh, uh, two throughout three health, one evade, aloof hunter. While Cavern Moss is attached to an asset, it may be attached, attacked as if it were an enemy engaged with you forced. After you have succeeded at a skill test while fighting or investigating at Cavern Moss's location, if it is ready, attach Cavern Moss. To an item asset you control, treat as that asset's text box as if it were blank, except for traits. So it is aloof here. Okay. Mm. I think we need to get rid of that, so... I'm just double checking, so um, I can hit it first with the hatchet, it attaches to the cave moss, then I will overpower it and get the hatchet back. I think that's the plan. So it is aloof, so I need to engage it. Uh, we, I will hit it with the hatchet, so I am adding my agility. We are at a dark location, so my agility is plus one, so uh, we are hitting three, four, five, six, seven versus two. And this deals the plus one damage. Uh, minus three, so it takes two damage. 
and the hatchet is attached to it and then we will overpower it uh, by this so we are hitting 6 versus 2 minus 1 uh, we defeat it we get the hatchet back but we are treading water here and we draw two cards of the overpower because we succeeded by enough. We get perception and matchbox. Those will be helpful later. Uh, enemy face, this enemy hunts over here. I moved it, it a bit closer. So uh, it will hit us for one damage and one horror. Uh, the venture gets those. And it will elusive away here. That is our turn. We draw jury rig and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, I missed one thing because we are at a dark location. This would have flipped over. So at a dark location, uh, it has four fight, three health, and three evade hunter. Uh, crusty and hybrid gets plus X health, where X is the current day number, so it is uh, six. Forced after Crusty and hybrid flips to this side, Crusty and hybrid deals one damage to each investigator at its location. But this was over. These were already dark, so it had flipped already. But then it has this mutated. Uh, yeah, when we defeat it, but it is still engaged with us. So we can uh, try to fight it. Okay, so we add one do. Uh, we are at 9 of 12, so we are running out of time fast. Encounter card is... Uh, reclaimed by nature. So we are at the dark location. So test willpower 3. If you fail, you must either take two horror or each enemy at the location and each connecting location heals one damage. Uh, we don't want that guy to heal any damage. So, well, uh, we don't have anything to commit. So I'm testing uh, 3 versus 3. Uh, minus two, it will heal damage. That sucks, but uh, yeah. Uh, we still need to deal five damage to it, which will be hard. Uh, we could evade it and uh, try to run away, which sounds like a better plan at this moment. So, uh, I will try to evade 4 versus 3. Minus 1, so that's a lucky break there. That is evaded. We will uh, investigate here, and I'm committing the perception. And uh, jury rig, we don't have a good thing to commit for that, uh, play that for. So we are six versus three here. Plus one, uh, we get this clue. We get the top card of the cavern deck, and we'll move to that in a heartbeat. Uh, underground, underground pools, uh, three shroud, one clue, cave dark. Action investigators at underground pools spent two clues as a group. Remember that the investigators found a set of footprints. Forced after you fail a skill test while investigating underground pools, take one horror. Okay, so we found the first uh, piece of the puzzle. Oh yeah, and we drew a card from the perception. Uh, cleaning it a bit late because we don't have uh, the chainsaw anymore, but... Maybe we'll commit the icons on it. Okay, that is our turn. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. This enemy readies. We draw another venture and again a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. 
So we are at 10 of 12, so second to last turn, and uh, the encounter card is Unnatural Growth. Place one Doom on the nearest enemy with no Doom on it. If no Doom was placed by this effect, discard two cards at random from your hand. So we are out of time. Nothing we can do. So that gains Doom. Okay, so one, two, three. Oh yeah. Uh, Uh, there's no way for us to get this to a day location. Unfortunately, that would have uh, been enough movement to get to resign. So uh, we'll do the next best thing. We'll move to underground pools. We'll spend two clues, and we remember that you found a set of footprints. And uh, last action, we'll try to investigate here, and I'm committing. All of these cards. Uh, we are investigating. Uh... Oh yeah, uh, I think I put this. Uh... No, no, we moved there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we uh, spent the clues. Invest. We still have two actions left. Okay, so we spent the clues. Now we are investigating, uh, and I'm committing these, so I'm uh, 6 versus 3. Minus 3, we get this clue. We put this location here, and last action, we'll move there. Alkaline Forest. After you reveal Alkaline Forest, you must either take one direct horror or discard two cards at random from your hand. We have to take the horror. And enemy phase. This is here, it moves, hunts over here, upkeep, we draw, winging it. There's two clues here. And we gain a resource, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom, so the agenda advances. And yeah, so we have one here, so we have 12. Unfortunately, uh, enveloped in moss, you find yourself surrounded by the dark, uh, in the dark by dozens of shadowy forms, clacking and chittering, more unsettling still in the soft glowing moss that spreads across the slick walls and the ceiling of the tidal cave. As the creatures and shifting moss press in, suffocatingly close, you lose your balance and fall into a thick carpet of moss. Up close, you see a small but but uh, you see small buds and spiny growths in the moss that palpitate and turn towards you like a hundred tiny mouths. As you feel your limbs go numb, a pair of hands pulls you from the moss. Helen Peters drags your body out of the cave, cursing under her breath. Each investi uh, surviving investigator who has not resigned is defeated and suffers one mental trauma. Okay, so we get a mental trauma. Then uh, that is the end, so we read uh, resolution, no resolution reached. Uh, so your efforts have re reached their limit. The unnatural fungus and aggressive wildlife are too much for your, you to handle. You have no choice but to abandon the search. Each investigator earns one bonus experience for coming face to face with the horrors of the coastal caves. Uh, skip to resolution 4. Uh, I'll start making preparations soon as uh, uh, this is uh, resolution 3, so we'll go here. Miskatonic survey, June 1926, members Marquez, Musgrave et al. Uh, Northern shore and coastal caves, extremely dangerous, identified dozens of hill, there are two undocumented species of biolo bi bioluminescent fungus an exceedingly hostile ecosystem with extremely sensitivity to light. Um, avoid the Aquan Caves if at all possible. Update your camper log. If Gideon is searching for a heirloom, 
uh, it, uh, he isn't, so we'll skip. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator may now spend the experience recorded under unspent experience in your campaign log. If the area surveyed section of your campaign log, check off Aquan shoreline. Check your campaign log. Uh, it is day three, turn to prelude the final evening, page 55. Okay, so uh, we have uh, two experience out of this scenario. I'm just checking no victory point locations. And uh, we have one here. We got one bonus experience from the scenario resolution and we have two unspent experience from the prelude. So we have four experience to upgrade our decks before the final uh, night prelude. So that could have gone much better, but it uh, it didn't. But it is what it is. So still, um, hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.